In my last video, I gave some guidelines for choosing a handgun for self-defense, and I recommended a few specific models that I think would cover the needs of most people who are new to shooting. This list was not intended to be exhaustive. There are a ton of other suitable handguns out there, but there are also a lot of really bad ones, and today I want to talk about the potential consequences of choosing the wrong handgun. I think this is relevant for less experienced shooters, but also for those of you who are going to end up helping out friends and family members who are trying to pick out their first gun. Any handgun could be the wrong choice if it's not a good fit for the shooter and for their specific situation. And some handguns are just objectively terrible because they are either poorly designed or poorly made. In any case, there is a valid argument to be made that uh, we in the shooting community place way too much emphasis on gear selection. And that's probably true, so I'm not going to try and tell you that you will be killed on the streets if you choose a gun that is not on my approved list. In reality, people manage to defend themselves all the time with crappy guns. The type of gun that we have with us at the time of a violent attack is not likely to be the primary deciding factor in whether we survive that encounter. At the same time, there are limitations to that cliche analogy, it's the Indian and not the arrow. The Indian didn't learn how to shoot using a broken bow and crooked arrows. I think it's important that people start out with good equipment whenever possible. The guns you choose for self-defense and the guns that you practice with, particularly for inexperienced or untrained shooters, can have a huge impact on how you develop as a shooter and whether you even decide to keep trying at all. Choosing your handgun wisely can make it very easy to develop some basic self-defense skills. But trying to power through with a gun that is less than ideal can lead to unnecessary roadblocks to improvement and can even negatively influence your mindset towards self-defense in general. For example, one of the most common mistakes people make when they're picking out a self-defense pistol is to insist on a gun that is too small for its caliber. This could be a Magnum snub nose revolver or a little pocket 380, but lately I see it most often with the subcompact polymer 40 and 45 caliber pistols. These are some of the most miserable little guns out there, but unskilled shooters get suckered into buying them all the time, and usually they are men who believe that uh, Newton's third law of motion somehow doesn't apply to them. Almost without fail, these guys end up struggling to achieve anything close to competent shooting. Compared to their 9mm counterparts, the larger caliber subcompacts are really difficult to control. They are usually uncomfortable to shoot for more than a couple of magazines at a time, and the excessive recoil makes it really easy to develop a bad flinching habit. Large calibers should be for large handguns. Another common mistake is to overlook hand size when choosing a handgun. And I don't just mean whether it feels comfortable in your hand at the gun store. You need to be able to reach the trigger with your index finger without that finger coming into contact with the frame. If there's a manual safety, that needs to be within reach of your shooting hand thumb without shifting your grip around. It should not be a strain on your fingers or your wrist to manipulate the pistol. If the gun doesn't fit your hands, you're going to end up wasting a lot of training time trying to figure out how to modify your technique just to operate the gun. That's training time that could have been devoted to fine tuning your skills if you had started with a gun that fit better. One more example of a common mistake is choosing a gun based solely on price. I understand being on a tight budget and having some very real financial limitations, and if that's your situation, obviously you just do the best you can within your budget. But a lot of people who can afford a decent gun just refuse to believe that a four or $500 pistol could possibly be better than a $250 pistol. I'm not saying there aren't any decent low cost guns out there or that expensive guns are always better, but usually the companies that are consistently offering the cheapest handguns are cutting corners on quality. On average, cheap handguns malfunction more often at the range and under actual fighting conditions than moderately priced guns. Maybe that budget pistol will work when you actually need it, but why would you want to take that chance if you can afford an extra $100 for a gun that is statistically more likely to function? Now, even if you make one of these mistakes when you buy your pistol, you will probably still end up with an adequate self-defense tool. 
But let's consider some of the indirect consequences. An inexperienced shooter who buys a subpar gun for self-defense can easily become discouraged by how difficult it is to consistently hit the target at the range. Or they could be turned off to shooting altogether because of a pistol with sharp recoil. Or maybe they will be quickly frustrated by trying to figure out what's wrong with their gun when it can't make it through a full magazine without a malfunction. Dealing with these issues when you are trying to learn a new skill can have a powerful demoralizing effect. Shooters who have bad experiences early on are less likely to practice or seek out training. They're less likely to develop safe gun handling skills, which makes them a liability every time they touch a firearm. If shooting their carry gun feels like a chore and they don't ever make any serious improvement, they will probably either lack confidence that they're gonna be able to use the gun successfully in self-defense, or they will overestimate their ability. Either way, they're in a poor position to make good decisions under stress about when and how to apply deadly force. Ultimately, the gun itself is a small part of the self-defense equation. That said, I really believe that in a lot of cases, people buy the wrong gun before they understand what kind of gun they actually need, and that has a domino effect that results in a lack of confidence and skill. Without those two things, I think it's questionable whether there are any better off than before they bought the gun.